Oh my goodness, this is insane. SpaceX has just revealed the new engine for the Starship Human Landing System and successfully completed testing with this new engine. Honestly, this isn't the first time SpaceX has shocked NASA and other companies. Just four months ago, they announced the world's most powerful Raptor 3 engine, and this time is no exception. The new Raptor engine has also astonished its competitors, especially NASA, leaving them unable to keep up with SpaceX's rapid development progress. So, what makes this Raptor engine so special? And how did it come to amaze NASA? And also, what was Elon Musk's reaction to this engine? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Recently, NASA shared videos of some impressive Raptor tests conducted at SpaceX's McGregor Test Facility in Texas. NASA promptly posted on its X page, SpaceX recently conducted a cold start demo of a Raptor vacuum engine for the NASA Artemis Starship HLS. This test fired pre-chilled engine hardware simulating in-space thermal conditions for landing on the moon. The first test Raptor was the Raptor vacuum as posted by SpaceX. SpaceX. Test of a Raptor vacuum engine chilled to mimic conditions after a long coast period in space. Not only that, SpaceX also provided a bonus video with the caption, Raptor engine demonstration of a descent burn to the lunar surface. From these two videos, it's clear that they are preparing for the future Starship HLS spacecraft and everything looks good as both videos show the exhaust stream spewing out in a long and graceful way. This test successfully verified that the engine can be ignited and operated in the extremely cold conditions experienced during extended periods in space. One of the unique challenges specific to Artemis missions as opposed to missions in low Earth orbit is that the lunar landers may remain idle in space without firing their engines for an extended duration. This idle period can cause the hardware's temperature to drop to levels significantly lower than what it would experience during shorter missions in low Earth orbit. In a 200 an 81 second long test firing, Raptor demonstrated the powered descent portion of the mission when the Starship HLS leaves its orbit over the lunar surface and begins its descent to the moon's surface to land. The test had two goals, to show Raptor's ability in changing the level of engine power over time, known as its throttle profile, and for the engine to burn the full length of time of the powered descent phase. The successful test provided NASA with early confidence in the company's engine development. Elon Musk also enthusiastically shared this exciting moment with the rocket enthusiast community, posting Moon Soon on his personal X page. This appears to be an optimistic sign for Starship's promising future missions to the moon, and it might happen sooner than expected. Musk's post on X has sent shockwaves throughout the aerospace industry, garnering over 30 million views, hundreds of thousands of likes, tens of thousands of shares, and at the time of recording for this video, these numbers are likely to have increased significantly. Of course, SpaceX's progress with the Starship HLS prototype component has also taken the largest space agency in the United States by surprise. And what would compel me to say such a thing? Well, earlier, NASA had expressed concerns that SpaceX's Starship could potentially lead to delays in the Artemis program solely based on their one-sided perspective of the Starship explosion back in April. Following these concerns, SpaceX has consistently engaged in HLS-related development activities, seemingly wanting to demonstrate its progress to NASA. However, NASA seems to be indifferent, and one could even say, not even giving the Starship its due recognition, especially when it comes to the progress that it has made during this time. The stark contrast in treatment between NASA's expensive SLS rocket and Starship is evident. After years of grappling with persistent technical challenges, when the SLS was just integrated with engines, NASA made a thunderous announcement. And on the other hand, it was only after the recent successful test that this agency began to have some confidence in Starship's engine development. Meanwhile, when one compares SpaceX's Raptor engine to the SLS's RS-25, it's clear that the Raptor delivers greater efficiency. The RS-25 engine uses liquid hydrogen, or LH2 for short, 
for fuel and liquid oxygen or LOX for the oxidizer. This produces over 500,000 pounds of thrust with a specific impulse of 452 newtons per second when in a vacuum, making it one of the most efficient engine and propellant combinations. However, the methane and liquid oxygen combo has several advantages over the LH2 and LOX for the Raptor engines used on SpaceX's Starship. Methane is less bulky than liquid hydrogen. It also takes up less room for the same amount of energy, so the rocket can be smaller, which is pretty ironic when we're talking about the super heavy booster. This all basically means that there will be less drag when climbing up the dense air at sea level. Besides that, the SLS rocket is also a money spending machine that has faced numerous criticisms within the space community. But it's not so easy to derail this train when you consider how it easily overruns costs like that. Meanwhile, Starship, or any other private company's rocket for that matter, is all but a reluctant choice for NASA. Nevertheless, SpaceX and its space products remain a crucial component within NASA's operational framework and the entire American aerospace industry. Currently, Starship is awaiting FAA approval for its upcoming flight, which may be postponed until October, as indicated by NASA officials and no specific time frame has been officially disclosed. But if Starship is not allowed to launch promptly and frequently, NASA's plans could face significant delays, and neither NASA nor the entire United States wants that to happen. Mainly because out there, numerous countries are steadily emerging as game changers in the space race. Why, back in January of 2019, China landed the first spacecraft ever on the dark side of the moon. The country also has plans for a moon base within the next decade at which it plans to deploy a telescope with 3,000 times the field of view of the Hubble. China has its eye on Mars as well. That being said, it isn't hard to find voices warning that the U.S. again risks falling behind in the space race. Back in August of 2022, the Pentagon predicted that China would surpass American capabilities in space as soon as 2045, and China is hardly the only other country with an expanding space program. The United Arab Emirates became the fifth country to reach Mars with its HOPE satellite. India just became the fourth country to land a spacecraft on the moon and the first to land on the moon's south pole. In order to maintain its lead position, NASA must successfully return humans to the moon for the first time in over half a century. And it all comes down to the Artemis missions. With the robust development of SpaceX's Starship, this program may alleviate some of NASA's concerns. As long as NASA continues to collaborate and trust in SpaceX, building the first American lunar base is undoubtedly a feasible endeavor. A lunar base could evolve into a fuel depot for deep space missions making it easier to live on Mars and solve long-standing scientific mysteries about Earth and the Moon's creation. It could even spur a thriving off-world economy, perhaps one built around lunar space tourism. However, the Moon is also a four and a half billion year old death trap for humans and must not be trifled with or underestimated. Its surface is littered with craters and boulders that threaten safe landings, but a bigger worry is that is what eons of meteorite impacts have created, regolith also known as Moon dust. Maru Tangavalu, an aeronautical engineer at the University of Southern California, wrote in 2014 that the moon is covered in a fine talc-like top layer of lunar dust, several inches deep in some regions, which is electrostatically charged through interaction with the solar wind, and is very abrasive and clingy, fouling up spacesuits, vehicles, and systems very quickly. Peggy Whitson, an astronaut who lived in space for a total of 665 days, previously said Said that the Apollo missions had a lot of problems with dust. There's also a problem with sunlight. For about two weeks at a time, the lunar surface is a boiling hellscape that is exposed directly to the sun's harsh rays, meaning the moon has no protective atmosphere. The next fortnight after that is spent in total darkness, making the moon's surface one of the colder places in the universe. In any case, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Also, please let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. And so for that, once again, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time.